Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about this recent story that was kind of trending online about the Japanese company that's planning to develop wooden satellites. To which my first reaction was, what? Also, why? Also, what? Because it kind of doesn't make sense. But let's actually dissect this story because there might be something good coming out of this after all. Now you might have seen this story already, it uh, started on BBC, it also kind of spread across various media. Although honestly, one of the more interesting takes on this was from the Ars Technica article that does talk about some things that were totally not mentioned in any of these stories. But the idea here was that this particular company that's apparently about 400 years old, the company whose main business is forestry, is planning to collaborate with one of the universities in Japan in order to try to develop some sort of a wooden satellite, a satellite made almost entirely out of wood. And your first reaction might be, okay, well that sounds cool, but also wouldn't that break pretty quickly? And also, why would you be doing this? And your reaction would be absolutely valid, because that's pretty much what most of us asked. And all of the articles talking about this basically focus on the idea of space junk and how, for some reason, the wooden satellite is supposed to reduce space junk in space. And the main point that the forestry company is trying to make is that by producing wooden satellites, we can somehow reduce the amount of space junk out there in space. Now this is actually an interesting proposition, but it doesn't really make sense. Here's why. So in this particular simulation, you kind of see the amount of different satellites in space already. There are over 6,000 satellites in orbit as of 2021, early 2021, and there are going to be at least a thousand more by 2022. About 60% of these satellites though no longer work, they're basically space junk. Furthermore, by launching each of these satellites, a lot more debris was introduced into outer space, which actually constitutes most of the space junk. So for example, according to European Space Agency, we know that today there are over 34,000 relatively large pieces of space debris produced by all sorts of launches over the past few decades with about 900,000 objects being about this big that we are actually unable to track right now, and possibly over 128 million objects that are anywhere from 1 mm to 1 cm in size. And even these objects can actually cause dramatic destruction to an object if they actually hit it. For example, a few years ago NASA released this picture right here showing the effects of a tiny tiny micrometeorite striking the window of the International Space Station. This micrometeorite was extremely small in size. In comparison, a typical space debris would be actually larger. And so if any of these 128 million pieces do strike the International Space Station, the damage would be quite catastrophic. And so when it comes to space debris, it's the rocket launch itself that's responsible for most of the space debris out there. The satellites themselves normally don't really last long enough and often return back to Earth, often burning up in the atmosphere, leaving almost nothing behind. But here's the thing though, during this burn-up process, a lot of the material that satellite is made out of does actually turn into all sorts of atmospheric pollutants. For example, it produces a lot of gases of aluminium that to some extent can be seen as maybe toxic to animals. And a lot of other complex materials that usually satellites are made from could maybe also produce other toxic materials as well. So based on this, Japanese Sumitomo Forestry Company decided to develop a satellite that would not produce these toxic materials upon re-entry into the Earth atmosphere. In other words, their whole premise is that by having a satellite made predominantly of wooden materials, it might actually limit the exposure of Earth atmosphere to potentially toxic materials from other materials that satellites are usually made from. Now, that's a really big if though, because first of all, we really don't have that many satellites re-entering Earth. Every year you might get one or two, but you'd need to have thousands and actually even millions of them in order for this to have any influence on the atmosphere. For example, on Earth, a lot more aluminium is released as a gas, as a potentially maybe toxic gas, from Earth itself, from underground. Most of it is not actually from outer space or from man-made activities such as satellites. So in other words, the satellites polluting the atmosphere is sort of a non-issue, it's never really been a problem and will probably not be a problem for, I would say, decades if not hundreds of years, possibly much, much longer, possibly never.
So in this case, by having a wooden satellite, we don't really solve the problem of all of the space junk and space debris already in orbit of planet Earth, neither are we solving the problem of adding more space junk either, because these satellites will also have to be launched using the same principles as we use today, and this will still generate just as much space junk. And they obviously don't solve a problem of having atmospheric pollution, because that's currently not really a problem at all. And so is there anything that this company is solving then? Well, they do have some interesting points. One of the major points they're making here is that by having a satellite made out of wood on the outside, you wouldn't really have to have any extending parts such as for example antenna or radar emitters that are usually needed for a typical satellite. And this is because wood can actually transmit radio waves through it. Basically, unlike metals or unlike other materials, in this case, a wooden satellite would be able to transmit all of the radio waves from within it. So you wouldn't really have to have a lot of complex moving parts on the outside because it could all be just stored inside. On the other hand, by having so few moving parts, this also limits the potential collisions with other satellites and of course, limits the chance for the satellite to break and also limits the total surface area that needs to be exposed to the outside. But there's still an obvious problem. The problem is, is wood going to withstand the extreme conditions of outer space, where temperatures can deviate from being extremely cold to extremely hot in like just a millisecond? Because for example, by putting an actual tree in space, it's first of all going to lose all of its water, the water is going to evaporate, creating a lot of porous parts on the inside, and because of this, the wood is going to become very unstable and is eventually going to create a lot of problems for the tree itself. It's actually going to end up producing even more space junk as the wood itself crumbles and starts to produce even more pieces. Because of this, this company wants to collaborate with Japanese universities to try to develop, I guess you would call it like a super wood, some sort of a very specific wooden material based on cellulose and the other material usually present in trees known as lignin, which normally provide the structural support and the hardness, as well as rigidity and tensile strength to trees around the planet. So by possibly combining lignin, cellulose and a few other components from a typical tree, the company is hoping to develop some sort of a super wood. Now that's actually not very far-fetched. As a matter of fact, last year there was at least one study that's already created this kind of a super wood material that was apparently even stronger than aluminium. So in that sense, it's totally possible to produce something out of wood that's extremely strong, very rigid and has very low carbon footprint. In other words, it's very cheap and very easy and environmentally friendly to produce. And also something that can be used in various conditions, including possibly outer space. At the same time, in the last few years, we've seen a really major resurgence of interest in trying to develop new wooden things, new wooden structures, new wooden materials, and most interestingly, in 2019, we've seen the final completion of the world's tallest wooden structure located on a lake in Norway. Being roughly around 85 meters tall, this is basically as tall as it gets right now for structures made entirely out of wood. Now this is very impressive, but not surprisingly, Sumitomo Forestry offered to build something that's about 5 times as big by 2041. In other words, it sounds like this company has a lot of ambitions, but we don't really know if it can deliver. Definitely an interesting story, definitely an interesting proposition, but at least in terms of the satellites, it's definitely not solving any problems, at least any major problems. All of the space junk is still going to be there, and the satellites made out of wood are not really going to make this any better. And when it comes to using wood in space, this is also not the first time that someone used wood in space. For example, the most recent use of wooden structures in satellites was with these Chinese reconnaissance satellites that were meant to be recovered and that used wooden heat shields. And even some of the earliest NASA missions to the moon were trying to use the wooden cover for some of the landers on the moon to essentially soften the blow as they land on the surface. Unfortunately, we don't really know if it worked or not because all of those missions failed and we don't have any data from them. But as you can imagine, some of them are still orbiting the solar system and some of them have actually crash landed on the surface. So there are some wooden structures out there in space already, we just have no means to find out what happened to them. But anyway, on that note, that's kind of all I wanted to mention in this video. 
it's definitely an interesting proposition and might end up leading to the production of some really unusual and some really interesting materials that we can actually use on planet Earth. The materials that might be very strong, the materials that might possess very unique properties and be extremely easy and uh, somewhat cheap to manufacture. But unfortunately, unlike the initial reports, it's definitely not solving the problem of space junk and it's definitely not going to help us with anything else that was mentioned in these news articles. In other words, the wooden satellites might be a novelty, they might be cool, but they're not going to function any better than a typical satellite. On that note, you can find the articles and some of the other studies that I mentioned in this video in the description below. And subscribe, share this with someone who loves to learn about space and sciences, maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.